Hallelujah. Thank you. Today, we will continue with the descendants who stand on the side of sin. Esau will be our focus today. The word of life comes from Hebrews 12, verse 16. That there be no immoral or godless person like Esau, who sold his own birthright for a single meal. This is the word of God. Amen. The topic for today is Esau. The Edomites are descended from Esau. In the Bible, he is Jacob's twin brother. Genesis 25 verse 24 says, There were twins, and the first one was named Esau because he was red and had hair that covered his whole body. Therefore, Esau was a red and hairy man. Genesis 25 verse 26 states, Afterward, his brother came forth with his hand holding onto Esau's heel, so his name was called Jacob. The name Jacob means a person who grabs the heel. Later on, the name Jacob took on the meaning of a deceiver. Despite being the firstborn, Esau neglected his birthright. For a bowl of lentil soup, he sold his birthright to his younger brother Jacob. He lost his place among the covenantal people. Take a look at Genesis 25 verses 33 and 34. And Jacob said, First, swear to me, so he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. In English, it is translated to right. He sold his firstborn right to Jacob. The outcome was that Jacob exchanged bread and lentil stew with the birthright of his brother Esau, who in turn despised his birthright. Esau by neglecting his birthright, forfeits his position as the eldest son in the covenantal family of Abraham and Isaac. God made a covenant with Abraham and with Isaac. And Isaac gave birth to Esau and Jacob. Esau could have succeeded the covenantal family, but he neglected this birthright and sold it. So, Jacob received the birthright. Later, Esau married a woman descended from Cain's line. He wed Ada, a Canaanite woman, and the daughter of Elon the Hittite. Take a look at Genesis 36, verse 2. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Oholibama, the daughter of Anna, and the granddaughter of Zibon, the Hivite. In 1 Chronicles 1, verse 8, Ham had four sons, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Esau in his marriages to Canaanite women, consequently wed daughters descended from Cain. After that, he married Basmat, Ishmael's daughter. Genesis 36 3 states also Basmat, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nubaot. By marrying, a Canaanite woman and the daughter of Ishmael, he became a descendant of Cain. Reverend Huizan Abraham Park summarizes it in this way on page 84 of the Genesis genealogies. Through these marriages, he simultaneously linked himself with the line of Canaan, the son of Ham, and the line of Ishmael. Thus, the ungodly 
descendants of Cain not only shared a common philosophy and lifestyle, but also became a part of each other's bloodline through marriage. They united in the effort to stand against God's will and continue on the path of disbelief. Adam and Eve married and gave birth to Cain and Abel. Cain, however, killed Abel. As a result, God gave Seth in place of Abel. Through this line of Seth, Noah was later born. And through this line of Seth, Abraham was born. And ultimately, Jesus was born as a descendant of Abraham. In the end, this line of Cain became a family that opposed God's will and the Messiah. Fourth, let's examine Amalek, a descendant of Esau. Esau gave birth to a son, Eliphaz, and Eliphaz had Amalek through his concubine, Timnah. Take a look at Genesis 36, verse 12. Timnah was a concubine of Esau's son, Eliphaz, and she bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These are the sons of Esau's wife, Ada. Who are the Amalekites? During the Israelites' exodus from Egypt, Children, women, and the elderly fell behind. And the Amalekites attacked those who were struggling to keep up. Many vulnerable people were killed when they attacked from behind. Take a look at Deuteronomy 25, 17, verse 18. Remember what Amalek did to you along the way when you came out from Egypt? How he met you along the way and attacked among you all stragglers at your rear when you were faint and weary, and he did not fear God. On the outside, it may have seemed like an attack on the weak, but in reality, it was an attack on God. Therefore, this is telling us that they did not fear God. In response to this incident, God declared that he would fight Amalek from generation to generation. Take a look at Exodus 17, verse 16. And he said, The Lord has sworn the Lord will have war against Amalek from generation to generation. In addition, God proclaims in Deuteronomy 25, verse 19, You shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven, you must not forget. Later, there was a man named Haman, and he was a descendant of Amalek. Haman is listed as an Agite. The Agites are descendants of Amalek, and further back, they are descendants of Esau. Please check Esther 3, verse 10. It is recorded Haman. The son of Hamadada, the Agite, was the enemy of the Jews. Also, Esther 9, verse 24 and 25 introduces Haman as the son of Hamadada, the Agite, the adversary of all the Jews. Haman was a descendant of Agag. And Agag was the king of the Amalekites. Agag was the king of the Amalekites. Tracing Agag's lineage leads to Esau. Esau's descendants tried to kill all Jews in order to prevent the Messiah from coming. Haman, the descendant of Amalek and son of Hamudada, did not win. Ultimately, God's people won. No matter how strong Satan the devil is, God's redemptive work 
will ensure that God's people will be victorious. In the name of the Lord, I pray that today, both you and I will stand unwaveringly with God in the course of redemptive history, ensuring eternal victory. Let us pray. Living Father God, Esau's line is spiritually connected to Cain's line. Esau neglected and lost his birthright, and his descendants, the Amalekites, attacked the Israelites from behind as they fled, killing countless vulnerable people. Haman, a descendant of Agag, the king of the Amalekites, attempted to kill numerous Israelites during Esther's time, but ended up hanging himself on a tree. Even though Satan the devil hinders the Messiah's coming, the word of God ultimately triumphs in the history of redemption. Lord Father God, guide and empower us to stand firmly on the side of your word and grace so that our lives may reflect a holy faith consistently employed to fulfill your work of redemption. We leave everything in your hands and sincerely pray in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen.